My name is Sam and I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in November 2017. Hey guys, welcome to my video series. For you guys that don't know me, my name is Samuel Purcell. I'm one of the coaches and owners of Panda Coaching. And the reason I've decided to do a video series is for a number of reasons. Uh, number one is to educate people on what my condition is, um, as well as what just irritable bowel disease is in general. Number two is to show the steps I took to recover from this condition. Uh, reason number three is also to give people an insight to my lifestyle, especially during flare-ups when I have to be very meticulous with what I'm doing in terms of what I'm eating and how I approach each day. And number four is just to give you guys that are watching this uh, motivation to overcome your adversities, uh, whatever it may be. So you guys are wondering what the hell is ulcerative colitis? It's a type of irritable bowel disease that causes inflammation of your large intestine um, due to the immune system acting inappropriately. So there's actually two types of irritable bowel disease. The first one being colitis, um, which I've already mentioned, and then the second one being Crohn's, which I'll go into a little bit of uh, detail later in the video. So I'll start off with ulcerative colitis, going into a bit more detail of what that is. So Ulcerative colitis is inflammation of your large intestinal wall, the most inner wall, what we call the mucosa layer. And what happens from this inflammation is that we get ulcers along the lining of the intestinal wall. And there are various types of ulcerative colitis. So the first one is proctitis. So this is inflammation just occurring around the rectum area of the large intestine or the colon. Then there's proctosigmoiditis. So this is inflammation occurring through the rectum and sigmoid. Then there is left-sided colitis, so this is going further up, so there's inflammation around the rectum, sigmoid, as well as the descending colon. Then there is extensive colitis, where there's inflammation through the rectum, uh, sigmoid, descending colon, as well as the transverse colon. Then the last one is pancolitis, where there is inflammation through the entire um, colon. So Crohn's disease is a little bit different to ulcerative colitis. It still causes inflammation of the large intestine, but it also actually causes inflammation from anywhere from the mouth all the way down to the rectum. So what happens with this type of inflammation is that it actually doesn't just cause inflammation along the most inner lining. It actually causes inflammation through the entire thickness of the wall. Um, so that the, the lining or so the wall becomes a lot more thicker than it would normally be. There are just like colitis, there's various types of Crohn's disease. There is iliocolitis, which is the most common form. And this is where there is inflammation in the uh, end of the small intestine called the ileum and also the large intestine. Uh, then there is ileitis, which is just affects the ileum of the small intestine. The next one is gastroduodenal Crohn's disease. And this is where there is inflammation in the stomach as well as the beginning of the small intestine, which we call the duodenum. The next type is duodene oilitis. I don't know if I pronounced that one right, but this is where there's inflammation in the upper half of the small intestine called the duodenum. And then the last one is called Crohn's colitis. And this is where there is just inflammation in the large intestine only. So with Crohn's, it's also categorized um, by the severity of the disease and the types of uh, symptoms you're getting from uh, the inflammation. First one is stricturing, where there is narrowing of the intestinal wall. Um, and this leads to obstruction or changes in the quality of your stool formation. Uh, there's also, the second one is penetrating. So this is where there's abnormal passageways or what we call fistulas between uh, your intestinal wall and other parts in your body, such as your skin, bone, and organs. So pretty much there's like a hole in your intestinal wall that's letting stuff leak out into um, other parts of your system, which then actually can cause inflammation in these parts as well. Then the last one is inf uh, inflammatory disease. And so this is just pretty much where there is only inflammation going on. Um, none of the two previous conditions are occurring. So it's the least severe of the three. In terms of symptoms, both of these diseases are quite similar in what you'll get. Uh, they include things such as diarrhea, abdominal pain and cramping, uh, rectal pain, 
uh, passing blood and pus, anal fissures, so where you have slight tears in the intestinal wall, urgency to defecate, inability to defecate even though it feels like that you need to, uh, decreased appetite, uh, weight loss, fatigue, fever, joint pain and weakness, information of your skin, joints and eyes, and then children who get this disease at a very young age, failure to grow due to the body not being able to extract enough nutrients. And with regards to symptoms, they can come and go at any time with this disease. So you'll have periods where you don't have very much symptoms and periods where they're quite severe. So when they're quite severe, this is called a flare up. And then what we call when the symptoms are quite low or you're experiencing almost or practically no symptoms, which is a perfect scenario where we want to be, this is called remission. With regards to what causes this disease, it's not exactly known what actually causes it, uh, but there are a number of theories. And the first one is the infectious theory. So uh, with the infectious theory, what's believed is that after a uh, bacterial or viral infection, uh, this causes a immune system to act inappropriately and attack its intestinal wall, um, not being able to recover properly from it. And then there is the immune theory, uh, which seems to be the most promising one that has the most evidence behind it. Uh, and this one, it's believed that if you're an individual with a highly permeable intestinal wall or you've uh, had an injured intestinal wall for whatever reason, um, it allows for food particles or bad food particles and toxins to enter your bloodstream due to your um, intestinal wall being highly permeable and allowing things to leak into the bloodstream. And then what happens from here is that the um, immune system uh, acts inappropriately and attacks the intestinal wall. Then there is the genetic theory, uh, where some people believe that it's through genetics that this disease is caused. So if your family is uh, has a history of this dis uh, disease, that you're more likely to get it. Um, but the thing is also individuals um, that have got this disease have um, some have no family history of anyone having this disease then there is the environmental theory it has been shown that it's quite prevalent in western countries um, and some individuals think this is due to our diet because our diet is quite um, refined in terms of we have quite a lot of refined sugars and a lot of trans fat um, something that the body shouldn't be having a lot of but we tend to have a lot in western diets as well as the pollution in our countries as, and also the hygiene. There are a number of ways uh, doctors look at diagnosing this condition. The first one is through blood tests. They'll have a look at how your iron, your folate, and as well as your B12 levels are. Um, and this is due to the blood loss that you um, suffer from when you have this condition. Um, in individuals that lose quite a lot of blood, uh, the iron, folate and B12 levels tend to drop quite a fair bit and they tend to get in a condition called anemia. Uh, they also look at your stool samples. So from this, they're able to identify white blood cells that may be present in it, as well as bacteria, viruses and parasites that um, signify that you may have a type of gastro disease or something like that. X-rays are another tool that is used and this is to see if there is any sort of obstruction or narrowing of your intestinal walls. Colonoscopies and endoscopies are used quite a lot and this is where they will stick camera um, down either your throat or your bum. And so, so endoscopy is where they put it down your throat. Uh, colonoscopy is where they put it up your bum. And this is pretty much where they have a look of how the condition is of your intestinal wall. And if there is information going on, they'll generally see things such as quite a lot of redness and um, ulcers going on along the intestinal wall and bleeding as well. And the last one is biopsies. So this is where they'll take a sample from the intestinal wall inside, say when they're doing a colonoscopy or an endoscopy, and they'll have a look at this sample and see what white blood cells are present, what bacteria are present, so they can make a proper diagnosis. People generally affected by this disease are in between the ages of 15 and 25, but it can occur at any age. And having a family history of it does increase your risk of getting it, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get it. And it's more common in white people, as well as Jewish people of European descent. And it's usually in terms of uh, the rate that it occurs, it's generally about one in 350 people will suffer from this disease. 
Um, Canada actually has the highest rate of this with one in 150 people getting this disease. When it comes to treatment, there actually is no cure. Uh, many of the treatments that are effective target their immune system. So medications such as corticosteroids, immune suppressants, uh, biologics have been become a key uh, treatment for moderate to severe irritable bowel disease. Uh, but in very, very severe cases where none of these medications are working, um, the doctors may consider surgery. So what they'll do in this case is they'll remove the part of the intestinal wall that is infected and then reattach um, the, the parts that aren't affected. So they'll reattach them and so that now there isn't any infection along the intestinal wall. But not in all cases this works and sometimes the disease um, comes back. The main purpose of all these treatments is to get a person out of a flare up and get them into a point of remission where they're experiencing very little symptoms or no symptoms in a perfect situation. So now I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about my story. My story starts at the start of uh, 2017. Uh, at this point in time, I was focusing on eating in a surplus. I was eating about 5,000 calories plus. Uh, and so this was quite a lot of food to me, but it was what I needed to do to get towards the goal I was focusing on, which was to eventually compete again in bodybuilding and bring a better package compared to what I last did. Um, so, you know, I need to focus on eating in a surplus so I could build more muscle and strength. And I got to the point where, because I was eating so much food, I was no longer tempted by any food that was put in front of me. So, you know, it could be something that was, think of like your most favorite um, dish something that makes you really crave it and salivate when you think about it and you know for example if your favorite food is like pizza or something if that if, if a pizza was put right in front of me that was just straight out of the oven it wouldn't tempt me like I wouldn't want to eat it and you know I didn't think it was anything to be concerned with as I thought it was you know, probably just part of the bulking process I'd just gotten to that point where I was eating so much food that you know it, just whatever I ate wasn't really going to um, you know, really tempt me or anything like that. But it wasn't until I started feeling odd to the point where no matter how much I ate, even if it was just a small amount, I wanted to throw up. So I got to the point where like, every few nights I would, I would be, say every one to three nights, I would be getting up, running to the bathroom and throwing up. And I also got to the point after about one or two months where I started having these black tarry stools, sometimes with blood. Um, and this is when I sort of started getting um, concerned and so I decided to go see the doctor and the doctor did a blood test and the breath test and there was nothing abnormal noticed from these tests. It wasn't until we did a stool test that he found that I had um, a Aromonas species which is a type of bad bacteria uh, which can cause gastroenteritis, a type of inflammation of your gut. From here I was put on some antibiotics. Um, some of the symptoms improved, I was actually able to eat more now and I was actually more tempted by food you know I'd salivate sort of thing when I had those like delicious types of foods in front of me like cakes and pizzas and that sort of thing so it was going back to normal um, but I was still experiencing tarry stools um, I was actually to the point where I was going to the toilet about 10 times a day about two to three would have been solid um, and just about all of them had always a had blood passing through them so I went back to the doctor, he referred me to a gastrologist, we did some more blood tests again and from the blood tests and the stool tests actually we did as well, um, they found that there was no Aromonas species which is great, um, so there was nothing wrong um, with regards to that it had improved. Um, so we decided to go into the next step which was to get an endoscopy and a colonoscopy. So the endoscopy where they put the camera down your throat, they found that I had um, gastritis which is inflammation of your stomach as well as inflammation along my esophagus due to the reflux of food coming back up had caused a bit of um, burning of the lining there. And then from the colonoscopy, so the camera that goes up your bum, uh, they found from this one that I had colitis, so inflammation along my large intestine. So from here, um, the uh, gastrologist prescribed three medications, a acid inhibitor, um, so this would help with um, stopping the reflux occurring so then that way I wouldn't be burning my esophagus and then also a uh, prednisol and sulfazalanine which helps with decreasing the inflammation through your digestive tract 
um, and she also asked me to avoid gluten and lactose. So the symptoms did start to improve. However, I started running through other problems such as severe joint pains, which I wasn't previously experiencing. And so this um, led to me having to sort of lay back on my squats, deadlifts and bench, which sort of um, put me back a bit, uh, which sort of disappointed me as well. Um, so, you know, I started to look in other ways I could improve this a bit more. Um, so these other symptoms weren't occurring. So I started tracking my daily intake. So really looking into the types of food I was having, um, tracking how my energy, sleep, mood, and noting when I may, um, when something may have triggered my symptoms. Also introduced things like probiotic um, or having more probiotics and uh, rich foods and supplementation. Um, also increasing my anti-inflammatory foods and spices to help with decrease in the inflammation that's occur that was occurring in my gut. Um, as well as gut line healing foods such as glutamine, which can help with healing your mucosa layer of your intestinal walls. And also following a low FODMAP diet to um, decrease the stress that was being put on uh, my di digestive tract by giving it a bit more easier foods to digest. Currently I'm in remission, so I'm experiencing very little symptoms to no symptoms. I'm feeling quite good. Um, energy mood's been a lot better. Uh, joints aren't as bad, like I still am getting pains here and there, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was a couple of months ago. Uh, much less uh, digestive discomfort. And yeah, so everything's been quite good at the moment. So I'm gonna leave this video here, uh, but in the um, upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be uploading more videos going into uh, the steps I took to recover in a more detailed process, my opinion on certain medications I took and protocols I followed. And I'll also be doing some vlogging videos just showing what my lifestyle is like and just showing you that um, even if you have this condition, you can live a normal lifestyle. Yes, there are gonna be restrictions, but you can still have a fairly um, normal um, going lifestyle and still do a lot of the things that you love. And also showing me getting back into a surplus as I'm focusing more on performance and strength at the moment. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Lee and Wes are also doing a video series covering their journey leading up to their comp in March. Uh, and if you have any questions with regards to your training and nutrition, feel free to reach out to us as we love to help when it comes to your training and nutrition. So you can contact us by either leaving a comment below in the comment section or on Instagram at the Panda Coaches. Or if you want to use our email, it is info at pandacoaching.com. If you want to check out our website, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And for you guys that have been diagnosed with irritable bowel disease, such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, or any other type of digestive tract disorder, uh, put a comment below when you're diagnosed, how you've been managing it and how it is at the moment. And if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in the upcoming weeks. Anyway, that's it from me guys. I shall see you in the next video.